Jesus of the Divided Central Province after a meeting held at the Jubilee Conference Center Ibadan, from January 25th to 26, 2021. The title is Building Nigeria Under the Rule of Law. We Catholic Bishops of Ibadan, Ecclesiastical Province, from President of Ibadan Archdiocese, Ilori Ondo, Oyo Ekiti, and Ushuku Diocese. After our first meeting for the year 2021 at the Jubilee Conference Center of Ukiado Ibadan, from January 25th to 26, 2021, prayerfully issued the following community. One, blessed are the merciful. We give profuse thanks to God Almighty for making us see another year and for his goodness and mercy, especially regarding the limited effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on our people and country. We applaud the faith of our people all over the country during the tough period of the lockdown. In spite of the restrictive lockdown and other measures put in place to combat the emergency, the faith will continue to, to engage in family prayer, future works of mercy, and works of charity. We know it with pride, the sacrifice of many religious organizations, church societies, civil society organizations, and individuals who catered for the poor, the sick, and aged, other vulnerable people around them. May the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, who called us to be merciful, so that we might obtain the message to be fulfilled in your own time through Christ our Lord. Amen. Combating the COVID-19 pandemic, we commend the spirited effort of the government, at federal, state, and state levels in providing facilities and regulations for confronting the pandemic at the onset and for support and palliative arrangements for the vulnerable segments of our population. We, however, regret that to date, many Nigerians still conduct themselves in a risky manner, hardly observing any of the recommendations issued by, the, by their own safety. Since that, since that the pandemic remains deadly, we plead with all Nigerians to keep themselves protected by following all the laid down rules meant for their own safety. We urge the authorities and the media to sustain public education and enlightenment, provide more testing centers so as to provide the public with sufficient facility and understanding of what it takes. We strongly recommend that the authorities not allow anyone to use the COVID-19 pandemic for selfish gains or interests. We also plead that our medical experts be allowed to subject to appropriate tests the COVID-19 vaccines coming into Nigeria in order to secure the confidence of Nigerians so that they may willingly submit to the medication. It will be immoral and unjust to compel anyone to take the vaccine. In full and investment, Criminality, uh, criminality and the rule of law. We, ad we identify with the growing efforts, with ongoing efforts of the governors of some southwestern states to regulate the activities of polar and investment with western states, the zone, and for the communique issued after their recent meeting with stakeholders. We note that insincerity, selfish interest, and lack of political will had in the, play, in the past caused needless destruction of life and property and inflicted untold pain and hardship on innocent citizens. However, our governors must shun deceptive adulations and empty promises on issues that impact the security of life and property. They must work with the security agencies to courageously implement the law in all cases and, san and sanction those who blatantly and murderously flout it 
in their territories. No Nigerian or foreigner should be, should be above the law in any part of the country. Current security concerns in Nigeria. With current realities, it has become more necessary than ever to demand the, the review of Nigerian security uh, architecture. Even the campaign promises of the present government and the quadrants of insecurity corrupting all over the country, it is unfortunate that the federal government has remained in purpose to this call. As a consequence, we parade a Nigerian army that has, that has not been able to effectively check the atrocities of Boko Haram for over a decade. How does one deny the allegation that kidnapping and banditry are abetted by government when, when even state governments pay bounties and headmen, headmen as a means of placating them? How can we claim to have a Nigeria police when the body is no longer trusted to protect the same people it was set up to serve in many parts of the country? It is frustrating to see governors constitutionally empowered as the first security officers in all of their states being impeded and rendered ineffective by mitigating actions and pronouncements allegedly made on behalf of the federal government when they take lawful steps to, re to respond to security needs in their states. Such manner of governance that exerts itself to protect the interests of a segment of the population at the expense of the security of life and property of the majority makes the emergence of militias and self-appointed desires inevitable. We therefore join all well-meaning Nigerians who have called on the authorities to allow alternative and lawful initiatives which are established for protecting life and property at the Southwest Security Network, coordinated Amotepo to try. Such initiatives deserve to be supported and optimized as a complementary security organization for the benefit of the people in different parts of Nigeria. The NSAS protest and the way forward. The protest which erupted in October 2020 alerted the government at all levels to, in, to important issues concerning the plight of the youth and the general populace in Nigeria. We regret the wanting loss of life and property, especially in the southwest of Nigeria, as eventually followed the infiltration of the protests. We pray for souls of the dead, including the youth and security agents, and we sympathize those who suffered loss of their property and pray that they get help for recovery. We plead with the federal and state governments to fulfill the promises made in the wake of the protests and not to ignore the reasons why the protests occurred as normally happens in Nigeria. We appeal to religious and public organizations and citizens to kindly provide empowerment and employment for our team youth population so that we can thus partner with the government to reduce youth restlessness in our country. Failing education system in Nigeria. Good education is the foundation of good citizenship. We, the character of a nation is formed by its educational system and the kind of attention which a nation gives to the education of its youth is necessary. We feel the sense of urgency in calling our nation to once more to the drawing table to do all it can to save our failing education system in Nigeria. Our nation is once again witnessing another conflict between academic staff, union of universities, ASU, other related associations and government, all over which 
have grounded our university system for many months. We plead for a quick resolution to the presence of conflict in order to resume academic activities in our universities. The role of mission and private formations in education should never be under underestimated. Government must encourage and work with the mission and private sector to continue to develop our education system. On this note, we thank the governments of Ekiti and Ondo states for taking the bold step to return the schools that were forcefully taken over by many years ago to their original owners. We renew our call to all the states of the Federation to return mission schools to their original owners and admit that the takeover of schools some years ago was a bad policy that has done us no good. Evidently, states that have already taken the bold step have many success stories to tell. The imperative of truth. Until and unless Nigeria enthrones the culture of honesty and truth, we cannot make much progress. We, no matter how, how bitter it may, it may be, the truth liberates. Nigerians must reject misinformation and commanders in, in mischief who love to manipulate the truth when it does when it does not serve the unjust status quo. So it is with the recent, recent bliss against the Bishop of Sokoto, Most Reverend Matthew Kuka, who in his Christmas message expressed some problems of his nation, of his nation. Nigerians must discern and reject such attempts to discredit and distort genuine expressions of concern for the good of the nation wherever it is made. We stand by people like Bishop Kuka who will courageously speak up and call for genuine change irrespective of tribe, religion, or calling. If we all join hands to embrace the truth wherever it is found, we save our own love lives and shall much quicker arrive at a destination of a better country for all. The year of St. Joseph. We thank the Holy Father, Pope Francis, who declared the year of St. Joseph to run between December 8, 2020 and December 8, 2021. Through it, the Pope caused Catholics to grow in their relationship with Joseph the foster father of Jesus, in order to learn from him, striving also to be more like him. At this period of crisis all over the world, we exhort, we exhort the faithful to take advantage of the year of highlight, and highlight, highlight the year to highlight and promote the stabilizing responsibility and virtue of fatherhood. Celebrating the feast of St. Joseph, March 19, and of St. Joseph, the worker, May 1, and, fam and family life, too, in a special way. Furthermore, let us ask St. Joseph's intercession upon the fathers in our, in our life and give the gain, the saints, a special place in our families and prayers. Kampala document. The Symposium of Episcopal Conference of Africa and Madagascar, second, on, 20, on January 21, 2021, launched four countries around Africa, the final document and an outcome of its year long Golden Jubilee celebration, which was held from July 2018 to July 2019, and was concluded in the Ugandan capital, Kampala. The 400 page Kampala document was unveiled in Ghana, Burkina Faso, South Africa, and Mozambique, and is entitled that they may know Christ and have life in abundance. With the ceremonies beamed live online, the document urges the people of God in Africa and Madagascar to study the life of Jesus in the Gospels in order to follow him more closely so as to receive from him the fullness of life and that he brought to humanity. We urge all our priests, religious and lay faithful, seminaries 
and other formations houses to access, study, and apply the Kampala documents to concrete pastoral needs. This is necessary so that evangelization efforts of the last 50 years in Africa may be further nurtured and the fruits, therefore, therefore harnessed for the further growth and consolidation. A call to prayer. Prayer is the oxygen that sustains people of faith in a place of, based on God's promise never to abandon his people. We plead with our faithful and all Nigerians to pray relentlessly that God continue to, con to bless, to bestow his mercy on our country, leaders and people in our effort to conform our conduct with our prayers. God will bless our efforts and turn things around for better. And a woman forgets her baby at the breast, feel no pity for the child she has born, even if this were to forget, I shall not forget you, Isaiah 49, verse 15. The St. Joseph, father of the Holy Family, increase for us, intercede for us all. Amen. Amen.